So if hyperbaric oxygen is so effective and has helped so many people, why is it still so incredibly underutilized in medicine today? With all the different benefits of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, you would think that more healthcare providers would either be using it themselves or certainly recommending their patients to get hyperbaric oxygen, but the truth is most don't and the majority of patients have never even heard of it. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders, and with two decades working with hyperbaric medicine, I wanna give you an honest opinion on why I believe that hyperbaric oxygen has not reached its full potential inside the traditional medical model. There are four main topics that are responsible for the underutilization of hyperbaric oxygen. The first is, I would say, misunderstandings and misinformation around hyperbaric as a therapy. There's a number of conversations to have inside that topic, but the two main that I want to cover is that oxygen is dangerous and that there's not enough research. I can't tell you how many people either comment on this channel or that I hear inside the lectures or the courses that I'm teaching that we don't think hyperbaric is good because oxygen is dangerous. And while absolutely oxygen can be dangerous and oxygen toxicity is real, and there's a framework for understanding how much oxygen we can deliver to a person safely, where it starts to become dangerous, and where we could certainly do some serious damage. The overwhelming majority of hyperbaric sessions are well within the safe and tolerant range of oxygen dose. In the few instances where we start to get a little bit closer to something like central nervous system oxygen toxicity, it's also very easy to mitigate by just adding one or two five minute breaks from oxygen where the patient in the chamber is just breathing air for five minutes instead of the oxygen. That will lower the likelihood of oxygen toxicity dramatically. But again, the overwhelming majority of sessions, whether it's on purpose or the practitioners don't even know where the oxygen toxicity line happens to be, most protocols of hyperbaric that they're following are well within the safe range. And so while oxygen can be dangerous, the way it's applied in hyperbarics is typically incredibly safe. Another possible harmful component to oxygen therapies is the oxidative effect that oxygen has on our cells. And yes, hyperbaric is an oxidative therapy, and therefore it does increase oxidative stress. In many circles, oxidative stress has now been blamed for the overwhelming majority of chronic illness that so many people are experiencing in today's world. And so how could we use hyperbaric, this oxidative therapy, on people who are already excessively oxidized? The simple answer to that particular issue is starting low and slow and building up pressure and exposures over time. Studies that have looked at the net oxidative effect of hyperbaric have actually seen the opposite to be true. There is not a net increase in oxidation from hyperbaric. There is short-term, but long-term, there's actually a net increase in the body's antioxidant defense mechanisms. We see increases in catalase. We see increases in reduced glutathione. We see increases in superoxide dismutase. And so really, as long as we start low, and build the patient's tolerance over time, not only will we not over-oxidize them, but we will actually increase the resilience of their own antioxidant systems. And if you need more information about oxygen toxicity or the oxidizing effect of hyperbarics, we've done a number of videos on those topics. So check the description below and you'll find links to those past videos on those topics. How about that there's not enough research? Sure. There's not enough research to support every single use of hyperbaric oxygen that's in existence today. At the same time, the amount of research that's been growing literally month after month, year after year, especially in the last three to five years, is overwhelming. Understanding the mechanisms of action of hyperbaric and then applying hyperbaric because of those mechanisms for certain physiological outcomes makes the most sense. That's what we've done in our clinic for decades, and that's what we teach in our courses. Especially if you're applying hyperbarics for off-label purposes, we shouldn't be doing that because hyperbaric is the treatment for this condition or the treatment for that condition. We should be doing it because we understand the pathophysiology of the health challenges that a person is experiencing. We understand the mechanisms of action by which hyperbaric functions, and then we look to see if there's overlap. Will these mechanisms help somebody with this pathophysiology? And if the answer is yes, then we should apply hyperbarics. And if the answer is no, then we should not. 
But most of the people that say there isn't enough research to support the use of hyperbaric have not kept up and are not current with the amount of literature that actually exists out there today. When I launched my hyperbaric clinic in 2005, there was no roadmap. I had to learn the hard way, how to run chambers safely, how to keep patients comfortable, and how to stay compliant. That's why I created the Basic Hyperbaric Technician Certification Program. I wish that I had access to this course when I first opened my clinic. In just 12 hours of training, you'll understand the science, the safety, the protocols that every operator needs to know. If you're serious about getting into hyperbaric oxygen therapy, start here and enroll today. Another reason that I think hyperbaric is so underutilized is because it's talked about out there as a cure-all, as a magic bullet. And nobody believes in a magic bullet. If we talk about hyperbaric as if it cures and fixes everything, it appears to be snake oil. And if you've ever heard me lecture, I say regularly that hyperbaric cures nothing. We shouldn't even be looking at hyperbaric as the cure for any of the reasons that we're actually applying hyperbarics for. Again, it goes back to the mechanisms of action and the pathophysiology. Hyperbaric helps a lot of patients suffering from a lot of different health issues. Hyperbaric helps increase the performance and longevity of a lot of people that are trying to optimize their biology for decades to come. But the reason for that is simple. Every cell in your body, other than the red blood cells that carry oxygen, require oxygen to do their job. And your red blood cell carrying capacity is the rate limiting step to how much oxygen we can deliver to all of those working cells and tissues. The only thing hyperbaric does from this standpoint is it creates a surplus of oxygen that would otherwise be impossible to create. And then it nourishes your cells and your tissues with that additional oxygen for additional capacity to heal, to regenerate, and to perform. So a lot of people benefit from hyperbarics, but not because it's a cure-all, not because it's a magic bullet, but because it's an incredibly important ingredient for cell function, for cell repair and regeneration, and for cellular performance. The closer we come to using that as the explanation of hyperbaric rather than the cure-all, the faster and more likely hyperbaric will continue to grow in the awareness on the side of the population and on the implementation on the side of practitioners. I believe another reason that hyperbaric is underutilized is because of many practitioners who are even thinking about offering hyperbaric just feel like it's a daunting and difficult hurdle to overcome, that the whole process and the steps that they have to take to launch a hyperbaric business inside of their clinic is more work than it's worth. Having opened and run and operating two hyperbaric clinics myself and helping dozens and dozens of other people open hyperbaric clinics all over the world, I can tell you it is far more simple than it feels or appears from the outside. Yes, there are rules and regulations. Yes, there are guidelines. Yes, there is a framework for how you need to think through offering hyperbarics inside your clinic, but we've done an incredible amount of work simplifying that process and simplifying that journey in order to help practitioners offer this because my main reason for teaching, training, and certifying, my main reason for doing research and writing books, my main reason for even having my own clinics is so that more patients have access to hyperbaric. I hope that one day all the patients who want and need access to hyperbaric can do it easily and find a clinic locally. I can promise you if you've ever thought about offering hyperbarics, there is a very simple solution for how to do this the right way. And in addition to the training and certification courses that we offer on safety, operator training, and clinician training, we also offer a range of business consulting services to help practitioners launch hyperbaric inside their clinic. Again, for more information on any of that, we will include links in the description below. And the last main reason that I believe that hyperbaric is really underutilized even shows up in those practitioners that have already chosen to launch a hyperbaric office inside their existing practice, and that is confidence or lack thereof. Having the tool in your office and available to your patients and recommending that tool on a regular basis to those who you know would benefit from it are two totally different conversations. And I've seen far too many clinics that have hyperbarics already in their clinic, but they under-recommend it because they don't have confidence in what the protocol should be. They don't have confidence in their policies and procedures, and they really don't know how to apply hyperbarics 
safely and effectively. And therefore, while they have it in their office, they actually avoid it. And if I'm being completely transparent, that was me many years ago. I had a chamber in my office. I had personal success with it. I had some success with my family and friends. And I decided I want to offer this in my office. And it sat in a room in a corner by itself, underutilized for a few years. I would only offer it to the people who didn't respond to all the other therapies and services that we offered. And after enough times where the patients that were non-responsive to my other strategies responded favorably to hyperbaric, I started to gain confidence. The more confidence I gained, the more I used it. The more I used it, the more confidence I gained. And what I'm telling you is, as long as that chamber is in your office and you're afraid of it, you will never utilize it. It will never get the use that it deserves and you will never build a structure or a business around that device and you won't offer it to all of the people who need it. The two best ways to gain the confidence that you need is to get the appropriate training and the certifications that you should have to operate a hyperbaric chamber and then to recommend and utilize that chamber and grow that confidence through use. The underutilization of hyperbarics inside the medical model is literally the driving force for this entire YouTube channel. And together, armed with the right information, we can help get rid of or dispel the myths and misconceptions that have haunted this industry for decades. Together, we can contribute to the research that this industry still needs to build a more robust body of literature to prove exactly how hyperbaric works and why we're able to utilize it for all of the different indications that we use hyperbarics for. We can move through our fears about how difficult and daunting it is to have a hyperbaric chamber and build a hyperbaric clinic in our existing practice, or at least be comfortable enough to be recommending it to those people who have chosen to offer hyperbaric to your community. And if we're gonna offer hyperbaric, we're gonna commit to the proper training, the certification, and the usage of the equipment that we've chosen to have in our possession so that we can build the confidence that we need to share the messages and the stories of the impact that hyperbaric's having on other patients and improve the utilization of hyperbarics inside each and every one of our communities. Certainly, hyperbarics has grown in awareness and implementation tremendously, especially in the last three to five years. But in the next three to five years, I want this to be so commonplace that again, Every patient that ever wanted or needed hyperbarics can have access to it and have access to it easily and locally. As always, I appreciate your time and attention and I look forward to seeing you on our next video. If you're in practice or about to be in practice or you've been in practice but you're trying to tighten things up and really dial in your hyperbaric practice, we put together a free ebook guide. It gives you some jumpstart tips as well as some checklists to go through to make sure that you have your policies, procedures all rolling in the right direction so that you can have a successful practice. If you're interested in that, click on the link in the description below and we'll make sure we send you to the page where you can learn more and get your free copy of our ebook.